Random Maker! It's Matt from The Random Maker here, and I'm here today to give you some basic instructions, demystify, and help you get into 3D modeling using a very awesome software that, when you're not using for commercial purposes, is free, and that is Tinkercad. Tinkercad is a great program for those who just want to experience 3D modeling, and to be honest, 3D printing, in a very user-friendly, easy way. And the best part is it's designed with kids in mind, but it's still a very powerful software to a degree. And I'm saying that because their other products, you know, AutoCAD and Inventor are better by a margin, but they're a lot more complicated to use. So when somebody wants to, do, to get into 3D printing or 3D modeling, this is always what I recommend because it's incredibly easy, incredibly intuitive. And it's just a lot of fun, to be honest. Well, let's flip over screens and let's get going with this. Okay, so now you can see where we are. I'm just started the screen at Google because, you know, almighty Google. The first thing you're going to want to do today is you're going to want to go to tinkercad.com. And the reason I say that is Tinkercad is just, like I said, for non-commercial use, it's free. And so it's a good way to kind of get used to software before committing over the top. And you can do a lot with a little with this particular software. Next, what I'm, we're going to get you to do is hit the sign up button. All right. And just use a personal account unless you're a student or whatever. And the teacher is giving you a code and you have a couple different options to allow you to log or sign in. I'm going to kind of flip over here just to hide some of my log information so somebody can't steal my account and we'll flip over there. All right, now that you've signed in, you should see something like this. Now, Tinkercad has a lot of great beginner tutorials, which is awesome. I actually recommend doing a few of them because if you are new to Tinkercad, this is a great way to kind of get through for it. Now, they also do have circuits. They do have code blocks and that's other things here. But for our purposes today, we're just going to be looking at the 3D designs. I'm going to click on the create your first 3D design. And what that does is that allows us to see well this right here. And I'm just going to go through the very, very basic functions of Tinkercad. And we're going to go from there at this stage. All right. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is just show you how to use the camera because the camera is one of the most vital components of the software. And this is where I prefer having a mouse, even though this software does work very well on a laptop or your phone. Even I just like having a mouse because right click spins the camera around. And your wheel zooms in and out. Really simple. Now, if you don't have a mouse, you can avoid that problem by, if you click over here using your left button, you can spin the work plane around. Really easy. All right. And then if you click on the box, you can spin it around with just your left click there. Um, if you ever want to go back to home, home button right there. If you don't have a mouse and you need to zoom in and out right in there. And if you want to switch to a flat version, we've got an orthographic drawing function right here. So that changes the perspective and it gives us one point of view. Okay. That's the crash course on the camera. Let's move on to the next. The next thing I'm going to show you is just how to set up your drawing and setting up your drawing in a proper manner will save you a ton of headaches down the road. First thing I'm going to do is take is change the name because I need to know what I'm working on. I'm going to left click on the name because it generates a random name for you. I'm going to hit delete and I'm going to type in a name. Okay, I'm just going to call it your name because this is a generic file. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down over here into settings and make sure what is set up it works for me. You can work in millimeters, inches, bricks. I tend to work in millimeters being a Canadian. And then I've got 200 millimeters by 200 millimeters. For our purposes, that's gonna work. You can change it, super easy. Next, I'm gonna hit X. Now, if you hit cancel, it'll cancel all your settings. And I kinda wish they had a save button, but say la vie, right? So I'm gonna hit the X button and we are now ready to draw. Now that we've got you understanding how the camera works and we've set up your drawing, let's start actually, well, drawing something or modeling, depending on what you think. I'm going to go over here into onto the right hand side. And well, we've got a bunch of basic shapes. 
and I'm only going to be using that for today. If you want to, you can explore. We've got all kinds of different designs, creatures, characters, and all kinds of other objects to play with. I'm going to stick with basic shapes for today. Now, we are going to go with these gray blocks later, but for our purposes, let's start with the red box. I'm going to left click, drag it over, and we have a box. Now, that's great. As you can see, I kind of opened up a menu here because there's three ways to change the shapes and sizes of your boxes or any other of the objects. Now, not every object has this menu. Some do, some don't. So you kind of have to understand all three ways to change the shape of an object. Okay, your radius at the top is going to change, well, the radius of the corners. So you can see here we have a box. Now we have a circle, box, circle. Okay. Steps we're not going to go into, leave it alone for today. Then we've got your length, width, height. Okay, here's one method how to change the shapes of your object. Take the slider and put it to what you want. This is not my preferred method because it is not as accurate. As you can see, we have 21.898928. And I don't like this method, but for some people, if you're not looking for accuracy, it works really well just to kind of see how things are going to look. All right. Now, I'm going to get this out of the way, so I'm going to hit this arrow up button and move that out because some objects won't have those sliders. Now, as we can see here, we have white and black boxes. The white boxes, if they're on a corner, allow you to pull in two separate directions. The black boxes, on the other hand, just one direction or the other. Now, how you can use your left click on a mouse and move these around, as you can see right here, and that's the second method. The third method, and to be honest, my preferred method, is we click on the box you want to get the measurements from. And if you click it, it, the measurements will stay in front of you. I am then going to click and type my measurements in. And voila. If you want to work with the height, it's the exact same. We've got a white box right in the middle, the top of the drawing. And I can click and Add it in right there and yeah so that is how you drag and drop and manipulate an object okay now that you've kind of moved a size and shape box how to now we need to move it and to the placement you want moving the box is incredibly simple just look for an area that click on it and then click on an area that doesn't have the boxes and you can just drag and drop and the nice thing is, just like with the white and black boxes, we can also dictate and type in the measurements we want there. Now, let's say you want to angle the object or put it on a different. So if, as you can see, we have these arrows that are kind of like, you know, bending a little. And we can move the box in whatever angle we want. And just like before, if I click on it, I can type in the angle I desire. Now, if you're wondering, well, you only have two points or two directions. If I right click on my mouse, you might sometimes have to move your object around to get the desired angle or movement that you want so that you can work with what you need. If you want the box to go up and down in the air without changing the shape, we have this black arrow on top, not to be confused with the white one, which is the and we can just lift it up and down and just like before I can type in the desired numbers right there all right now you've got the boxes moving around let's go into some of the more I guess advanced commands would be the words to use all right now that you've moved created boxes let's start actually building stuff well in reality I'm gonna build something simple just to show you the commands I'm gonna drag a second box over and I am going to make it bigger. And to put boxes together, it's incredibly, well, any object, not just boxes, is you want to overlap them. And it doesn't matter with this line here. We can even see it's got a ledge there. It does not matter, okay? Because the nice thing about the software is that unless you tell it to, there will be no gap. It is, they see it as, two one well two objects right now but you'll understand a sec why i say it, that does not matter okay now you've probably been wondering what are these gray boxes that i've been use well avoiding these are i call them cut boxes or cut blocks and what these do is very simple if i put it on the corner here anything highlighted by there will be cut when we put this object together 
Okay. As we can see here, I have three objects because we got one box, two box, and then the cut block or cut box. And I want to sh make this into one object because right now it's three. Even though if you transfer this over to a 3D printer, it would see it as one object just due to the way the software works. Okay. I'm going to left and click and drag and drop so that I can highlight all three at once. We can see shapes three right there. And as soon as you do that, you're going to see this button highlight right here called group. Now what group t does is it takes all the pieces and puts them together. Very simple. Okay. As you can see, it glued and fused our two boxes together. We can see no, no line and they are one now. And we can also see the cut block disappeared but it took the hunk of the box it was sitting on over and if we start to try and measure as we can see now it is treated as one object now let's say you made a mistake okay and you moved it around a bit and you're like oh no I need to change something all you have to do is click on it and if it is a item that you've used group on the bo ungroup button now appears and all you have to do for that is click on it and all three objects will be back ready to go all right well that's a little more hard commands okay before we kind of move on to the home stretch of this video i want to show two kind of final functions of this software that i think are worth exploring on your introduction to tinkercad the first one being text text incredibly easy left click drag it onto the uh, work plane and then type in what you need it's, that's as much as you want. You can change the height, the bevel, how uh, part the letters are. You can pick to a degree what how you want the font to look. And just like any other block on here, we've got your color or pull. Okay, and I'm just gonna delete that. The other one is your scribble. And this one's a little more, I'm not good at it. So just enjoy me trying to pretend I know what I'm doing. I'm gonna drag and drop it where I want it to be. And then it's gonna put it onto this kind of view and you want you get to draw how it's going to look and I'm just using the left click and once you're done it'll give you a preview of what you want if that's what you want that's about it you just hit done and there okay those are the two functions I wanted to show you. Okay, so you've kind of got very basics of this Tinkercad. I'm going to go over a couple other little things, and then I'm going to let you go off on your own, because one of the best things about Tinkercad, in my opinion, is that once you have the basics, you need to play with it for a bit before you can come back. There will be more tutorials on more specific instructions, as this particular video was just designed to be like, get your feet wet and get moving forward. Okay, now I've kind of hinted back and forth that not all the time the arrows and stuff or sliders are going to be available. And as soon as you group it, it tends to delete them because it's too unspecific or I don't actually know the reason. It just it doesn't work. So what we can see here is I've dropped the window and those sliders have disappeared. If you wanted to, you could turn any object into a cutting object by just clicking on hole. If on the other hand, you want it to be solid, but you want it to be represented by a different color, we've got all kinds of cool colors right over here. And we can do transparent, but I'm gonna stick with red just because. If you want this object to disappear, you can turn off the light. And then if you click up there, it'll bring it back. If you want to lock the object, if you're working on a bigger thing, you know it's right, you just left click on the mouse or the lock and your object is now locked. You could hit delete, you can't move it, you can't manipulate it, anything. And you can unlock it just by clicking it again. If you want to mirror it, uh, your object, you can mirror it this way over here and just click the sliders and directionalize it right there. That's about it for like your more advanced commands. Cause one of the things about this software is it's incredibly simple, which is the beauty of it. And once you are done your drawing and you want to 3d print it, hit export, pick how you want to export it and you're good to go. All right. That's Tinkercad. It is not a hard program. It is incredibly easy. Well, I hope you enjoyed that very basic introduction to Tinkercad. If you like the content or want us to do more like this, you know, put a comment below, give us a like, consider subscribing to The Random Maker in the hope that we can bring you a lot more variety of content and all kinds of cool, interesting projects to build, learn about, and 
maybe see something you've never seen before. This is Matt from The Random Maker saying, let's get making.